Jellyfish. Drifting at any depth in all the world's oceans, these creatures range from an arctic species with a bell the size of a car to a venomous mic microscopic Australian. Carnivorous predators, jellyfish swarm around our oceans and litter our beaches, yet we know surprisingly little about them. Some of the most recognisable species don't even qualify as true jellyfish. One such, a Portuguese man of war, Facilia Facalis, its inflated bladder keeping it poised at the surface, is not even a single animal, but a sizable colony containing four types of minute, highly modified pol polyps. Written by Margot White, photographed by Kim Westerkoff. Jellyfish keep things simple. No heart, no brain, no circulatory system, and no bones. They have a pouch for a stomach that doubles as the reproductive system, a mouth that doubles as an anus, and the rest is mostly water and a bundle of nerves. During the Renaissance, jellyfish were thought to be plants, and while 18th century naturalists allowed them entry into the animal kingdom, they were initially classified as zoophytes, something between plants and animals. We don't generally hold jellyfish in great regard. If we see them in the water, we tend to get out, and while hundreds of people will turn up to rescue a beached whale, few of us would stop to refloat a strand of jellyfish. And yet, Humans are probably responsible for what seems to be an international jellyfish explosion. In recent years, there have been reports from all over the world of uncommonly large blooms of jellyfish driving people out of the water, suffocating commercial fish farms and clogging up fishing nets and intakes of ships and power plants. According to numerous scientists, these blooms suggest that all is not well within the ocean. Perhaps something to do with climate change? Pollution, overfishing, or a combination of all three. Evidently, something is out of balance, but as many species suffer, the jellyfish prosper. As large ocean creatures are fished out, there are more food for jellyfish. They don't have many predators, and many of them are better suited to warmer water. It seems that one of the most primitive life forms is poised to inherit the earth, its watery parts at least. Some would and have argued that we might as well get used to eating them because if we continue fishing the ocean at the current rate, there won't be much else left. It's pretty scary actually, says Dr. Lisa Gershwin, curator of natural science at Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery in Tasmania and the former National Marine Stinger Advisor to Surf Life Saving Australia. There are many locations around the world that have flipped to jellyfish-dominated environments. Gershwin is concerned about the state of the ocean and the fate of the creatures within, but she is not inherently adverse to jellyfish. In fact, she is one of their greatest fans, one of the world's few jellyfish experts, and probably its only jellyfish taxonomist. When there's an international jellyfish conference, it usually means I've gone somewhere, she says. Dennis Gordon, editor of New Zealand Inventory of Biodiversity and Principal Scientist at NIWA, recently invited Gershwin to help review and update the taxonomy of jellyfish found in New Zealand waters. The review will be published in the middle of this year and will include 34 jellyfish, including three new species. It's the first time anyone has seriously looked at local jellyfish for over a century, and it was not an easy task. Several of the species have been described in literature, but many haven't been seen since they were first described. Jellyfish are poorly represented in museum collections, partly because they are hard to handle and tend to fall apart, and partly because nobody has really given them much attention. Even though this is an island nation where schools of jellyfish wash up on shores every year, there isn't yet a scientist in the country who has chosen jellyfish as their area of expertise. 
Little is known about the life cycle, ecology or behaviour of our jellyfish. We're not even sure if any of them are endemic. You have to wonder why none of the country's science graduates have chosen to become jellyfish experts, given that the species is of such medical and public interest. Possibly because the jellyfish is brainless, partly because the jellyfish is a brainless, heartless blob, occupying a low bow on the evolutionary tree of life? Well, they do have a simplistic form, says Gordon, but that doesn't mean they aren't interesting. I think they are incredibly aesthetic. When you watch them in an aquarium with backlighting and you can see them in their diaphanous beauty, diaphanous beauty, Slowly pulsing away, they are quite stunning. And what could be more charismatic than a stinging organism? Some beautiful images here.